Okay, so I, I've hinted before at the fact, and yes, it is a fact, and no, I'm not being self-deprecating, it is just what it is, that I am... I'm stupid. <laughs> My brain takes some time to process things and to... Uh, I don't know, like it takes me a while to this, like understand what's happening. That's that's fine. That's okay. You know, it's it's fine. Uh, <laughs> but I don't think I've ever felt this stupid. <laughs> this this the, the discovery happened uh, well, not multiple times, but this time I was in one of my group like book club groups, right? And I uh, I I saw that someone read the Hopeless series, which I recently read or i would like to think that i've recently read anyways i read the hopeless series and they had a total of five books in the series and they said i just read the hopeless series this is where i think about it and blah 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 and i my brain thought oh they they wrote some more but i don't know i like the hopeless series so maybe i'll check them out or the hopeless duology i should say so i jumped ahead and started reading the duology and it's not a duology it's actually a, a series compiled of uh, five books hopeless losing hope finding cinderella all you're perfect and then finding perfect granted finding cinderella and finding perfect are novellas but all your perfect is not and the other stupid thing is that i had all your perfect for a while now but i never checked it out and i didn't i didn't connect the dots i did not fucking connect the dots i don't know so now i'm actually going to read the hopeless series because i'm fucking stupid <laughs> i'm not gonna reread the ones that i've read because it's still fresh i am going to glance at them because it's not fresh and i forgot a lot of things uh we are going to to read finding cinderella which I, I i hate the title of and i hate the cover art and i'm so not into reading it right now but i want to we're very surprised so if you've read the hopeless series or you've seen my vlog opinion thingy review my video review of the both hopeless book hopeless and losing hope then maybe I, I don't remember if i did give you a glossary of the story or just talked about how it made me feel but finding cinderella is not from like a different and it's from a different pov but it's not just like something connected to the books like in november 9 again a coho book in november 9 ugly love there are characters that are mentioned in both books but they're not connected it's not a, continu a continuation of the story it just so happens that they are in the same universe and this is not like that this is actually a continuation of the story but from a different pov so if you remember or if you've read the hopeless series then holden's best friend daniel and his girlfriend val the the the, the crazy one it's from his pov and i did not expect it i don't know what i was expecting like someone tell me why was this 100th page novella better than some of her entire novels this one i would read this again and again and keep it on my shelves rather than confess rather than ugly love why was this novella better than full goddamn novel by her boy <laughs> there were some cringy parts and it, it is cringy it's just it's it's coho and coho is something you can't escape unfortunately but there were good parts cinderella is hot when she's poor and sweaty and slaving over a stove she also looks good in a ball gown this is the cringy part this is like the type of shit that the characters are saying that are very cringy and I don't I, I mislike them a lot like I, I really don't appreciate them in the story because it's like the author trying to make the the, the character funny or entertaining or amusing or that like a comic relief type of character and it doesn't work it just comes off as cringe this suffers from pick me syndrome I don't just mean one character I mean the entire book the entire I don't know the entire book suffers from pick me pick me pick me it suffers from the pick me syndrome yes daniel has a lot of pick me energy and the way he talks about his love interest has a lot of pick me she's just like she's not like any other girl and he literally like at the prologue uh, the the epilogue which i wish they just didn't add i wish it just ended and it's not like i wish i didn't read the epilogue because it went from a 3 to 2.5 but he literally said hold on sky and what's her name sky and six by the way, I hate the name Six. She always like gives these bitches names to try to make them like not the other like the other girls or whatever. And it's so fucking annoying. Like 
I hate the names Koho gives her characters. I hate them so much. But at the epilogue, he literally said, Hold on, you know they're not like any other girl in our school, right? So basically, in the Hopeless books, Daniel tells... Oh, this is gonna be a spoiler. But Daniel tells them a very interesting story about himself. And it so happened that this is the continuation of that story, which I really actually liked. There is a connection between them when they meet the two love interests. And it's very smart to have... A continuation of what happened in hopeless and hope and finding hope and whatever because without it it would feel really weird the way they're interacting with each other the way uh, it happened in confess for example they have this connection and it does not make any goddamn sense and at the end they try to explain it like why they have this connection is because of something that happened in the past but it does not make any goddamn sense it, it just it it's not, it doesn't make sense for me i mean personally but here it makes sense. The, the connection between them, the emotion they feel makes sense. It doesn't feel too fast or weird or anything like that. It just, it, it's cute. It's very cute. It's nothing like compelling or heartbinding or heartbreaking or mind boggling. It's just cute. Even though a novella, it somehow feels complete. It doesn't feel like a part of something, even though it is a part of something, and it doesn't feel like a novella, even though it is. It feels complete, which I was so surprised at. I wouldn't, like, recommend it vehemently to people, because it lacks a lot, and it's coho, but it, it's good. There was a small twist by the end, and it actually gave me shivers when I read it. It was good. It was good. It was different. It was good. It was literally red out of the blue. It came out of the woodwork, out of nowhere. I did not expect it. And it was good. It was very enjoyable. And I wish we have a continuation, but maybe we do. Because guess what, baby? We have all your perfect to read next. I did not read the summary. I'm not going to read the summary. I have the book. And I it's taken all of my power to not flip it and read the goddamn back. Because the summary is on the back. But I am, I'm just going to start it now. And I'm actually very hopeful. <laughs> so, we're just going to start with... What do you call it? Um, All Your Perfect, which I'm very excited for. And I'm gonna see you after I finish. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised, but not shocked. You know, you start a Colin Hoover book and you don't know what you're gonna get. Uh, so I, I finished All Your Perfect. <laughs> the first thing you're greeted with is the little dedication. It is cringe, but that's just me being picky. The dedication says to Heath, I love you more today than any day that has come before it. Thank you for being legit. <laughs> Thank you for being legit, dude. I, I don't like the dedication <laughs> at all. <laughs> but the good thing is, in all of 300 or something pages, that was the only cringy thing. First chapter was g good. <laughs> and it actually managed to make me feel the hurt the character was feeling in that situation. I didn't feel a separation between myself and the character, which is weird because while well, reading confess and ugly love and shit shit was happening to the characters in those books but there is a huge separating wall between me and the character that i didn't really feel shit for them like they were having so ter so many te terrible things happening to them and it was fine like i didn't care but here it actually managed to make me feel something so it's following the story of quinn and graham it starts in a and in an interesting situation and then you start following their story and it's very nice and I actually really enjoyed them together. I enjoyed their banter a lot. The entire book is from Quinn's POV, however, following two different timelines, then and now. And I enjoyed the back and forth a lot. It was done smoothly and I liked it. It kept me on my toes and it kept me excited, vehemently waiting for... To, for me to end the chapter so I can see what's happening in the now and then for me to end that so I can see what happened then it was an interesting not that this has never been done before it, of course it has been done but it was an interesting smoothness that you is required for like a then and a now to feel good and this one really had it uh, me being picky again in page 80 something 83 i don't know they said that um she doesn't eat she said that i don't eat vegetables i just i like fruit except tomatoes to oh tomatoes are fruit i thought that was like common knowledge and i i don't like that we have that here we had the same thing with it's like one little research one little google and you're you know what i mean you know what i mean because a botany you need like seeds to something be fruit and tomatoes when you cut in they have seeds and they don't have um anyways 
yeah, so they're fruit. They're technically fruit, not vegetables because of the insides of them. Something with co-host books that I've noticed is that they feel like the editing process is lacking. Anyways, back to the actual writing style, the then and the now, the POVs. I like that and I like the characters together. They actually don't make me uh, want to die. They, they, they're they cute. They're wholesome actually together. The jokes there are cute. The banter is cute. The back and forth is cute. Plus the POVs are well done and interesting. And the contrast between the timelines timelines wow <laughs> timelines i don't know the contrast between the timelines really keeps me like on my toe and on edge looking for what exactly went wrong when it went wrong and how it went wrong and what could have prevented it keeps you going back and forth with it pleasantly not necessarily getting tired of either of the povs either of the timelines ah the anger it made me feel the anger in a good way it's a it's a yeah it's a lot the anger it made me feel is a lot there's a situation that happens and it made me want to get in the universe and fight someone <laughs> I always hate when characters have underhyped reactions and this is 100% personal because I'm unstable and I will have the most overhyped reactions ever plus I have BPD like severe BPD which means I'm extremely sensitive and I will rage <laughs> so whenever there's a situation and a character is underhyped which I don't know if that's the actual like normal healthy reaction to certain situations and I'm just the messed up one but it just always gets me so angry for them which is a sign of good writing. However, I've noticed with Koho that the characters are always, almost always underhyped. I personally feel like it's almost always insufficient and an underreaction to a situation I personally think most people will take gravely. It also makes me anxious and angry for them in a bad way because it doesn't have that release or that orgasmic feeling I look for in dire situations like this. There was a cringy poem, a really, really cringy poem, but this one, worked out for the situation it wasn't a confessed disaster it actually worked for the situation and for the characters and it ended up being cute i don't really care for it that much but it ended up being cute nonetheless other one felt so off and out of place and the the, re the relationship felt off and out of place this though felt good it felt like a journey it didn't feel fast even though it was actually fast it just felt okay normal all in all, this one is a 3.5. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm happy and sad because of the ending, but truly that's just a personal, a personal thing I would have liked if the ending was something else that it would connect us to finding Cinderella. It would just, I would have liked a, a different ending. Even, even though I say that, but at the same time, I like this ending because it doesn't have always to be a specific happy ending. It can be a happy ending in so many different ways. Happy doesn't necessarily mean the same result. But now starting Finding Perfect, I hope <laughs> we're gonna get my personal happy ending. I think it's gonna follow the rest of this, but I don't know because this one and the other one was very different. It's like completely different characters, but I don't know, I'm fingers crossed that I'm gonna get my happy ending. Screaming, throwing up, on my knees, on all fours, on everything. I am... Oh, I'm so surprised! I'm so surprised, I'm so surprised. I liked her books before. I like Verity, I like November 9. I like. I enjoyed her books before, I enjoyed them. I, I loved Verity and Lila, but the others I just enjoyed. The whole series was okay, but this is the perfect ending. I got my happy ending. I really did get my happy ending. The ending that I wanted, I got kind of... I don't know, I got weird feelings and I think I need to see a therapist because of the weird feelings that I got. Like I got unnecessary angry, unnecessarily angry. Unnecessary anger. <laughs> Parts where I shouldn't be angry at and at people, characters, people that I shouldn't be angry at, which was weird. But uh, yeah, th this really, really, really is, th this really is really good. <laughs> Finding Perfect was the perfect, I don't know, closure. It gives you a sense of closure and being complete and being full while still just being a novella, a hundred page novella, a, a less than a hundred page novella, which is so, so cool. This is a complete 180 from the co-op that I've been stuck with before. I mean, I knew she had stuff that I liked, but I've been very, very apprehensive after the disasters. <laughs> but this is really cool. This merits 
the reviews that it gets. This, this merits, truly merits the five star reviews that it gets. So Finding Perfect goes back to Finding Cinderella and it kind of, I don't know, it doesn't um, pick up where it left, it picks up a, f a few a, f a few times after it left it picks up maybe like a few months after it, we stopped finding cinderella or a year or something and i thought that was really good it didn't feel like we cut off something it didn't feel like we missed something which i was actually very scared of but it felt really really good and it felt cohesive and smooth and i didn't feel like i missed anything like i i grew attached not really to the characters as much but just to the universe finding perfect was just the the perfect <laughs> finding perfect was <laughs> the perfect was the perfect link between finding cinderella and all your perfect it was just perfect <laughs> it goes back to kind of the the timeline of daniel and uh six that i told you about in finding cinderella and it goes back to those characters and it is from daniel's pov just like in finding cinderella which is super cool and yes i didn't expect it at first but i grew to like it i really really enjoyed his pov i think i enjoyed his pov more than i enjoyed uh, six uh not six what's her name hope's pov or sky's pov and i definitely enjoyed his pov more than holder's pov in uh losing hope this was a total 4.5 a total 4.5 i don't know like it's not perfect for me to give it five like entire five because i don't know the, the books that i give five just make me feel certain things that this one didn't make me feel but it is still a 4.5 and i like it so much i just realized i didn't say goodbye goodbye <laughs>